Dear Lord, we ask you to bless this comic variety show here tonight. May it be by turns both amusing and moving. May most of the performers still be vaguely sober and cocaine-free when they come up onto the stage. May the audience likewise behave themselves and refrain from shouting abuse at the turn. You yourself were no stranger to performing in front of big crowds. 5,000 turned up to your gig by the Sea of Galilee. And you know how distracting it would have been if after you had said, love thy neighbor as thyself, some pisshead at the back <laughs> had shouted, show us your ass more. <laughs> And may the performers likewise refrain from unnecessary bad language. Thou couldst so easily have peppered the commandments with fruity vocabulary. <laughs> Thou shalt not commit adultery could perfectly easily have been. Thou shalt not shaft thy neighbor's wife up against the temple wall. <laughs> but but if, dear Lord, a comedian should shine tonight, may he or she not be swollen with wicked pride. For as thou knowest, the life of a comic is full of ups and downs. Les Dennis, <laughs> where is he now? <laughs> Penelope Keith, ain't heard much of her lately. And of course, on the other hand, Barbara Windsor. Who'd have thought it? <laughs> Let everyone realize that in the end, all comedy comes from thee. Without the comic opportunities which you have created, John Cleese would just be a tall bloke with a small psychological problem. <laughs> And Eddie Izzard, just a weirdo in a dress. <laughs> For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> Fucking look at that. Fashion, it's style. It's a little subtle difference. You know what I mean? Because style is like the clap. Like, you've either got it or you haven't. You know. That's a, you know, a, lot, a lot of people would say to me, say, Paul, Paul, you, you're a sexist. I said, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a sexist. I am a radical feminist. I am. I think you've got to be these days. You know, if you want to get your end away. <laughs> So fuck it, I'm a feminist, you know. <laughs> and, but no, I know, I know it's, I know it's not how a woman is, you know, on the outside, how they look. It's the the the, um, the personality, how they are on the inside. That's that's what's important, isn't it? You know. And if they've got big tits, that's a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. But uh, no, I just tell you, what I love, I love uh, Sam Fox and uh, Linda Lusardi. And I have a dream every night, you know, that they're both naked in front of me, you know, and I, I've got to choose between them. It's a nightmare, you know, I can't. You know, in the end, I just have to toss. 
<laughs> well, probably come down on the side of Sam Fox, of course. <laughs> oh, so I'd say, I'd say I really like sort of, is Pam Miller Anderson. Lovely, isn't she? Very curvy, you know. Very cur Not much upstairs, you know, but then who wants to shag Bamba Gascoy? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Interesting. No, I see, the bad problem is it's the art of seduction. You've got to be very, it's got to be very careful. See, you can't just go up to a woman and say, hey, darling, can I shag you? You know? You've got to be polite, you know. Hello, darling, can I shag you? Please. <laughs> so, and food, you've got to, but take precautions. Please, take precautions when you're having sex. Put your fag out. <laughs> Move your cans when they won't get knocked over. Do you know what I mean? But, you know, food, food can be very sexy, you know, when, when you're having uh, sex. Uh, you know, pour some melted chocolate on a tummy, you know. Or whatever you've got to hand, ready break. You know, so, I had a full English breakfast the other day. Uh, eggs, bacon, beans, tomatoes, sausage, two slices of bacon, and uh, fried bread, and a cup of tea. She's a big girl. <laughs> I've seen her after the show, I can't wait, I'm fucking starving. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, I, I, I don't know if... I'm, I'm, uh, I was up for uh, ABH the other week, uh, actual bodily harm. Not grievous, I, I'm not an animal. And, uh, <laughs> I conducted my own defence, and it was brilliant. And I, I like to do it for you now, see what you reckon. I, I was I, great, you know. I stood there and I went... Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we are not on trial here today. I am not on trial. Society is on trial. The whole of the judicial system is on... Oh, fuck it, I'm on trial. I said, but I am not in dispute with the prosecution's version of events. On that we agree. There was a student, he was acting up, he got a slap. <laughs> but I was under severe provocation at the time. There I was, quietly having a pint, when a student walked past and nudged me, causing me to spill a bit. Ladies and gentlemen, I did what any fine upstanding citizen would do. I followed him to the toilets and I kicked his head in. <laughs> Perhaps I was a little overzealous. Perhaps I should have stopped kicking him when he was in the ambulance. <laughs> but I did what I did because I want to live in a better world. A world where we can have a pint in peace without fear of being nudged by students. <laughs> Is that a crime? Is it a crime to want to live in a world of peace and harmony? Is it a crime to want to live in a world of love? Is it a crime to hit a student across the back of the head with a snooker ball in a sock? Which, of course, it is. And uh, that's where the defence case collapsed. That's all for me. Enjoy the rest of the show. See you later on. Good night, good night. There's one dressing room for all the men, apart from Angus Deaton and Lenny Henry have got their own dressing room, which I'm a bit peeved about. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Now, why, uh, I just have to warn you, a naked man is about to run across the stage. He's going to do this without rhyme nor reason. We can't stop him. He's a friend of the Prince of Wales. <laughs> he says he always does it at Prince's Trust concerts. So, um, well, we just ask you to uh, bear with him. <laughs> so, if you're offended by the sight of gratuitous male nudity, would you please shut your eyes now? <laughs> Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I, I, I got that link in the wrong place. It's, uh... <laughs> A naked man is going to run across the stage for no purpose later in the evening. That was... Um, that was a naked woman <laughs> running across the stage for no purpose. Um, I hope no one had their eyes closed who would otherwise have had them open. <laughs> Sorry, it's cock up. <laughs> or not, as it were. <laughs> well, thank you. I can't be on television all the time.
morning, Uncle Harvey. Morning. Morning, Auntie Val. Morning, Benjamin. Please join us at table. Thank you. We haven't actually broken our fast as yet. We've been waiting for you. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> yes, we've been waiting since 6.15, actually. In this house, we usually rise at a reasonable hour. Oh, it's just that when you said I could get up when I liked, I thought it would be all right. It's not a problem, Benjamin. Don't make an issue of it. <laughs> so if you Maybe anything... people get up this late in your house. I don't know. We like to think of the morning as the better part of the day. Perhaps you're a naturally slothful person, sluggish and indolent, a dawdling flanner content to waste his life, spread-eagled on pillows, forever indulging himself in the pleasures of the palm. <laughs> I just don't know. Well, it's only quarter past nine. And already a third of the morning has gone, dissolved into the ether. Yes, but that Never is... Never mind. Never mind. Well, I don't know about you, Benjamin. We like to start the morning with a glass of fresh aqua vita. Would you care to join us? Yes, mineral water will be fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Not mineral water. Aqua vita. Aqua vita. The water of life. It really is the perfect way to set up your body for the day. Full of nitrates and enzymes, a natural antibiotic. The antival will fetch you a glass. You can fill it now if you like. I'm sorry. Fill it with your own feculence as we do. Fill it with my fe... Make sure it, Benjamin. Make sure it. Pass water. You want me to piss into a glass? <laughs> it's an aid to digestion and so good for the skin. Now, come on, on your feet. One mustn't be ashamed of one's bodily functions. Oh, no, I don't think I want Nonsense. to. Nonsense. Let's get the little fireman out, shall we? Oh. <laughs> right, if you'd like to hold the glass thusly, all you have to do is let yourself go. Uh, just release yourself into the glass. Just let yourself go, Benjamin, into the glass. In this house, we think of a dripping tap or a brabbling book. <laughs> just let it flow. No, I can't. Do you want a bigger glass? No. Nothing to do with the size. I don't want to, all right. <laughs> oh, dear. It seems Benjamin thinks there's something odd about drinking one's own slash. <laughs> something unnatural. Yes, I do. Well, there are plenty of precedents in the animal kingdom that demonstrate otherwise. My toads, for example, will consume almost three times their own volume in urine every day. Perhaps you would mock the toad <laughs> and his wisdom. <laughs> what is good enough for him is not so <laughs> for you. Well, the toad has been on this earth since the dawn of time. Millions of years before man saw fit to strut upright among the trees. And I dare say he and his amphibian brethren will outlast uh, their own petty species in the great evolutionary battle. So join me then and drink, drink, that we may become more like him and his Batrachian friends. Or would you prefer tea? Thank you, uh, thank you, Brixton. I'm Stuart Lee. That is Richard Herring. Uh, later on, I'm going to be talking to you about how my tragic and ultimately fatal addiction to various forms of hard drugs has helped me to overcome my previous dependence on born again Christianity. <laughs> amazing, it's what amazing. amazing. All the people, comic relief, or there's more people than in my whole village here, what Stuart. It's amazing. What are you doing? Tell you, all the stars backstage, you wouldn't believe it. Who tell you, you, who tell you who I only saw, the best person I saw. Who? You wouldn't believe who's on tonight. Right. Skeletor is on tonight. Skeletor. <laughs> Unbelievable. What, from He Man? He Man and the no. Master of the Universe, Skeletor, no, no, he's my no, hero. No. Rich, that's Bears from the Happy Mondays. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> it's an easy mistake to make. Well, to make. he was making plans to destroy the universe, Stu, I tell you. It was Bears all I don't the know, time. I he was acting a bit oddly, actually. I, you know, I think Bez yeah. might have had a drink of alcohol today, Why do you think Stu. That? He was very frisky, he was behaving very oddly. Really? I went up to him and said, I don't like that kind of thing. I went to him and said, Bez, you know. You shouldn't do that because alcohol is a drug yeah, like that. Yeah, and because right, uh, okay, yeah. I mean, I'm a big on that. And he really laughed again, really close in my face okay, like that. Yeah, 
don't understand why. <laughs> yeah, it's terrifying. That's why I thought he was skeletal, Stu. But I, actually, I am, I am anti-drugs, actually, mm. and it's a little serious. I know there's a few serious bits in tonight's show. I'd like to do one of my own. I, I, I don't take drugs. I've never taken drugs in my life. And i just like to say any young people in the audience, please don't take drugs. If you want to be like me, <laughs> thank you, um, <laughs> please don't take drugs, OK? So that's if you'd like to be a massively overweight 32-year-old man in a pink shirt with no friends, don't, don't take, take drugs. drugs okay. Anyway, you're a hip, you, you are a hypocrite, Rich. I'm not a hypocrite, you I'm are. anti-drugs, Steve. No, because you take I, drugs every day. I do not. You do, I don't. Rich, I don't. You, you take drugs I, every day. I do not. You take I don't. drugs. I don't. Rich, I don't. I don't. You do, I don't. You, I don't. Rich. I don't. Rich. I don't. Rich. I don't. Rich. Heroin is a drug. <laughs> It is. It is. <laughs> it is. That's a pick me up. Just gets me going in the morning. Steve. That's the way it is. It is. It's a dangerous class A drug. Dangerous. Dangerous. Ha. Yeah. Ha. Yeah. Dangerous. If it was dangerous, there'd be a health warning on the packet, wouldn't there? Nothing right. there. Right. It's right. a medicine because you inject it. Right. Okay. Right. You eat drugs. Even a monkey knows that. All right. If you are not a heroin addict, yeah. which you are, I'm not. You are. I'm not. If you have, have you ever tried to go for a day, 24 hours? without having some heroin? No. No. Because I get all shaky after a couple of minutes, you know. <laughs> Dead babies start walking across the ceiling. It's terrifying. <laughs> Heroin's good for you. Eat as much as you can. It's delicious. Now, um, I've got uh, some statistics oh. here oh. from a, a survey ah. we saw conducted Ooh. in the paper. Ooh. Of, um, Ooh. What? Ooh. What's ah. the matter with you there? Well, you know, I was hanging around by the old uh, canal yesterday. Oh, yeah? Of course. Only ended up with rat syphilis, didn't I? <laughs> Did you fall in? No, Stu, I think you've misunderstood my right. meaning. Uh, I started hanging around with a few of the rats. Oh, one thing sick. led to another, you know. You are sick. Right. No, I'm not, I'm not sick. I love all rats. I'm not prejudiced. Black rats, white rats, brown rats. Of course, they're all brown rats by the time I've finished you with are them. Sick. But... You are sick. What? What? Don't applaud what? that. It's your problem. You're the ones with the sick mind. Can I do this now? Yes, do that right. now. We've got some. Uh... Results, uh, statistics, national. Apparently, um, uh, the average person in Britain last year had sex 120 times, according to this 120? Survey. Yeah, I know, it's not very many, is it? <laughs> uh, no, that's rubbish, no. That, isn't it? 100. <laughs> but I question the figures, yeah, right? Yeah, so do because I. Because I yeah. think, right, yeah. how, do you, how, do they understand, how do you decide what constitutes an act of sex? Yeah, for good example, point, Steve. Is, um, does oral sex count good point, Steve. for those figures? Yeah. Does uh, anal sex count? Good point, Steve. Figures? Does that count? Does sex with animals count? What are you saying? Uh, what are you saying? I think we're doing a lot better over here in England if it does. What are you say? Consenting animals. Steve. Consenting animals? <laughs> oh, yeah. How do you know if an animal has given its consent? How can you tell? Oh, you can tell. How can you. <laughs> you can How tell, can my you friend. Tell? You can tell. Saying it in a Southern Baptist preacher accent doesn't make it any more true. How can you tell? You can tell, my friend. Saying it in a Stephen Hawking's voice doesn't make it any more true. How can you tell if an animal has given its consent? How? They make a certain sound. What Steve? sound do they make? It's kind of, um... Twit, twoo. <laughs> Twit, twoo, hoo, 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 hoo. So it's owls, mainly, then. Mainly owls, Stu, yes. Some rats. Some rats can be made to make you... that sound if you're rough enough with them, Stu. <laughs> you're sick. <But> I... <laughs> I love them all, they're great. Look at that, yeah. Go on, go on. Stop looking at me. Go on. Yeah, go on, baby. Makes their head spin 360 degrees, Stu. Oh. You. you like it, you owl whore. Go yes, on. Sir. Go on. Of course, uh, that's quite a large owl you've got there. <laughs> well, that owl is a barn owl, is Stu, it? of oh, course. Right. Yeah. He's thought it through. There, there's, there's your tawny owl, a little oh, yeah. smaller. And the little tiny snowy owl, little snowy owl. Yeah. Mind you, they're all snowy owls by the time oh, I've yeah. finished with them. <laughs> What's oh. the, what are you, don't oh. scratch yourself oh. in the, we're at the Brixton Academy. Sorry, Stu, I was, down, I was down at the estuary the other day. <laughs> of course, sir, uh, only ended up with eel non-specific urethritis, Stu. <laughs> it's worse than that. I got blue whale herpes as well. It's not. It's not did nice. you not? Did you not think to use protection? I used the eel as protection, Stuart. Oh. It did it work. have a kite mark? <laughs> They've all got kite marks by the time I finish with them, Stuart. Oh, yes. 
<laughs> doesn't mean anything, Stu. They I know. laughed. It doesn't matter. No, I'm not prejudiced. I like all kinds of whales, Stu. Oh, yeah. Killer whales, narwhals. No, stop. Did you like killer whales, narwhals? Killer whales, and, narwhals. And sperm whales. Mind you, they're all sperm whales by the time I finish with them. <laughs> is that what it is? Is it sperm whales? They're all sperm. <laughs> Is that what it is, Rich? Sperm whale? No. no. It's humpback whales, they're all humpback whales. <laughs> Damn you. So, uh, are you on in like yeah. five minutes? Have I you got some so, naked yeah. ladies before you? They, I think they've been and gone, the naked ladies. Oh, have I missed them? Yeah, the, uh... Always the way. Always away. I just can't believe it! How could our own son, our only flesh and blood, possibly disgrace us in this way? I just can't think of him as anything other than a Muslim. <laughs> Do you think I enjoy telling people that my only son has now converted to being Jewish? <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. I'll handle this. You're far too hysterical. Okay. We need to make everything of the car. Look, it's Javed. Or should we call him Judas? <laughs> Jesus, Dad, you're so melodramatic. <laughs> Where's Mom? She's throwing herself outside the window. I'm dead! Mom, you gotta stop doing that. A Muslim boy would never throw his own mother outside the window. It's, it's okay, Dad. We're, we're, we're in a basement apartment. What you gonna do? Throw herself up to street level? That's what? right. Make fun of your mother's suicide attempt. Why don't you? Now that you're all Jewish, you hate your Muslim mother and father. I... 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 I are you crazy? No, you, you, you're the only mom and dad I got. I, I thought you'd be pleased to see me happy through spirituality, unlike most <clears throat> young men of my generation who find happiness through pornography and drugs, which of course I would have been tempted to use had we not been related to every newsagent and pharmacist from here in Nuremberg. <laughs> but why Judaism? Would it have been any better if I turned Welsh? Islam is the fastest growing religion. More and more people are joining it. You had a head start on the others. You were in it already, already. <laughs> a, a head start. Now I'm in the egg and spoon race. Hundreds of people running towards Mecca. But my son decides to run the other way. What are you? A trout? My son's a trout! I, I... Dad, it's a salmon that goes upstream. You've got the wrong fish. Oi, don't take advantage of your father's innocence about fish. Have some respect. What am I? Chop liver? Hmm? I can fight my own battles. Naturally, a Muslim knew nothing about fish. But thank the Almighty, we have a Jew here to tell us. Uh, what am I? You're only his father! I'm only his father! Ay, 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 ay. My son, things can never be the same between us. I, I, why not? We have so much in common. We, we got the little hats, and we got the guilt, we got the West Bank. Why? Because you're going to start eating pork and bacon sandwiches is why! The Jews don't eat pork. You say halal, I say kosher. You say salam, I say shalom. Hmm. Salami, shalami. My son, some things you can never get back. <laughs> Mom, that, that's the beauty. Jews and Muslims are both circumcised. Aye, 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 aye. You told me it made me a cut above the rest. What is he talking about? I don't know. But haven't you ever noticed the uncanny resemblance between a, a, a rabbi and a Muslim cleric? The long beard, the glasses, the, the never picking up the check? Perhaps he's going through a phase. Maybe we can get him some pills from the doctor. I, I give up. I, I gotta get out of here. I feel my brain tumor coming back. I, I gotta change my analyst. Hi, hi, oi, Right. Well, here we go. Second time lucky. 
Now, this really is the point in the show when a man is going to run naked across the stage. His name is Joe, and he says it would help him if you could just yell out, come on, Joe, show us what you've got. <laughs> so, right, let's give it a go. On the count of three. One, two, three. <laughs> Oh, this is... This is fucking ridiculous. <laughs> I'm sorry, I mean, it's chaos backstage. It's not much better on. Uh, that was, of course, two blonde girls running across the stage, waving their hands in the air. So, Naked Joe is in part two. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Gracias para decírmelo. Sí, fue un camión. Sí, lo sé. Lo sé. Gracias. Bueno. Lo sé. Lo sé. Espera un momento. Oh. Oh, sorry, is that left a mark? No. <coughs> Adiós. A luego. Adiós. Oh, Paolo, what is it? What's the, what's the matter? My family. Yeah? My family all dies in crash. In a, in a crash. <laughs> in a crash, my yeah. family dies. You, you'd, you'd probably say have died, actually. <laughs> yeah. oh. it, it, was, <clears throat> it was yesterday, mm -hmm. incident. Um, an accident. Uh, an accident on mountain road? On a mountain road. You see, that's... <laughs> oh, that's the article thing again, you see, yeah? The lorry was swerve and was hitting the car. No, <laughs> not was swerve. No. <laughs> I've confused you now, haven't I? Sorry. Sorry, is this insensitive? No, um, it's just that that would be past simple that time, you see? Because that's an action that's happened in the past once and is finished. Is the lorry still swerving now? No, it swerved once and killed your family. So, <laughs> so the, the lorry swerved, yeah? The lorry. No, no, oh, hang on, no, you, you could be flash. You could say, the lorry swerved and smashed into my family car, killing the occupants. The lorry smashed into my family yeah, sorry, car. Quick question, did, did their heads come off? <laughs> I don't know. And okay, so just for fun, let's say they did, because this is, this is a great word, yeah? <laughs> Decapitating. Decapitating, so let's try again. The lorry... The lorry swerved and, and smashed into my family car, <laughs> decapitating mm -hmm. my mother, yeah. my father and yeah. my neighbour. Yes! <laughs> you see? <laughs> very, very, very good. Your English is really improving, Paola. So that's some sort of consolation, isn't it? Once I'm on stage, no matter what happens, it gets better because I'm in control and it's just before us. It's because it's so, so big, it's so new, and so many young people. <laughs> it's the smell of boy's sweat backstage as well, that's making me nervous. Um, the producer has asked me, has, uh, there's been some aggressive imagery tonight and of course nudity, and um, he's mentioned that this is a family audience um, with older people, so he's asked me to sort of entertain the older people and tell a couple of jokes, just to keep you all amused. So if that's all right by you, I'll do that. I'll just start with a couple of jokes so we're all together as a family. 
So joke number one, how do you get four old ladies to shout bollocks? Get another one to shout bingo. Because <laughs> they wouldn't be very happy, mate. I may not do the Kosovo stuff. <sighs> Joke number two, man goes to the doctor, says, Doctor, I can't pronounce my Fs or THs. Doctor says, well, you can't say fairer than that, then. <clears throat> I'm sorry, it's a benefit. <laughs> the producers also asked me to say that in the next portion of the show, there will be some bad language. And I do mean swearing, by the way, not improper use of the pronoun. Just so you know, I'll give you a little agenda of swearing, the word bollocks will be used. Indeed, I believe it just has been. Uh, there'll be a couple of fucks, no doubt about that. And without any doubt at all, a little cunt thrown in right at the end. <laughs> Not unlike the boat race, in fact. <laughs> you know, I'm just checking the class of the audience there. Most people are quite happy to laugh at that. A few pockets of bourgeois resistance here and there, I see. <laughs> That's not fair! Those little chaps train hard all year round. Where would the eight big chaps be without the little chap going in, out, in, out? They'd be drifting, that's where they'd be. Proof positive, my friends, if you need any more proof, proof positive that this country is run by the wrong people. The wrong class are in charge. The boat race, you have 16 of the finest academic talents this country could muster, and they have to have somebody in the boat with them to tell them what to do. <laughs> we don't need that. Big fat darts bloke doesn't need a midget going, arm back, arm forward, let go, arm back, arm forward, let go. Mm. And I worry about clocks. I've got a lovely little son, little brilliant little son, little Zippy, fantastic little boy, lovely little yeah, Zippy. What's wrong with that? Short for Zippy de Doodah. <laughs> Zippy de Doodah Day, what a fantastic name. <laughs> it's not me that's going to get beaten up at school. <laughs> <laughs> but he's a fantastic boy, but he's of his mother's side, he's middle, the boy's middle class, he's three, he can spell avocado. <laughs> That worries me. I love him dearly. Of course I love him. I've forgiven him now for being breastfed. We're good mates, that's fine. <laughs> no, I understand he has to be nourished. He should understand I can look at the other one while he's at well, That's fine, you know? <laughs> you can't get them off. They're tenacious little bit. Because you want to look at them. They're fantastic. Oh, you're so lucky. Women, you are oh, little Swiss army knives. You carry them without with you. They're just... <laughs> There's so many things you could, doesn't matter. Just, you can feed children for a start, which fact, you can feed children. No matter how drunk you are, they're always facing forward. <laughs> you just have to follow them, you get home. <sighs> they get men into art galleries. Oh, it's perfect. <sighs> they're so relaxing as well. They're better than tropical fish, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. oh. Must be great to get home from work all tired and tense and stressed just to be able to go, oh. I just feel the weight of the world and, oh. I don't know how transsexuals manage. If I had a penis and breasts, I'd never leave the house. It'd be fantastic waking up in the morning, throwing the duvet back. Where do I begin? <sighs> and at the risk of sounding crude, mate, imagine being out a come on your own tits. There's quite a few of them. No, I'm just laughing because Sean Ryder just asked if he could feel my tits. No, he's my mate, he's joking. <laughs> so I'm giggling away. He's half joking. <laughs> Bit of a hint, if you are out quite late at night and you haven't got a coat, all you need to do, make sure you've always got a book of raffle tickets. Then if it gets a bit chilly later on, you just go into a nightclub, go up to the cloak room, give in a raffle ticket and they'll give you a coat to go home in. <laughs> Saves all that pissing about around Dorothy Perkins. <laughs> These friends came around the other night with this video, Apollo 13. I thought, oh, I ain't watching that. I ain't seen the first 12. I won't catch up now. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. You know, they've got these alarm clocks that don't do anything like ring, as simple as that. They wake you up by talking to you. This voice comes on and says, it's time to get up now. And after 15 minutes, it comes back on and says, you're going to be late. I think it'd be good if after an hour, it just phoned your boss and told him you're going to have the day off sick. <laughs> could do that, couldn't they? 
you know, the best excuse you can give if you want the day off sick is to phone in and say, oh, sorry, I can't come in today. I've got terrible friction burns on my genitals. Because <laughs> they won't ask you anything else. <laughs> just get this flustered person on the other end of the phone going, oh, I can come in when you like. I, I, I just write flu on the form, shall I? Ooh. You say, no, you write friction burns on the genitals, mate. I worked hard all night to get them. <laughs> And my friend, she spent 50 quid in mother care on this baby alarm. Still got pregnant. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing. And tampons, they sell them all around the world. And everything on the box is written in nine different languages. You open them up, there's an instruction leaflet that folds out and out and out and out and out. And that's written in nine different languages. And in all these languages, it says, insert into the vagina. Fair enough. Actually, much better if you use it as a phrase book on an 18 to 30s holiday. <laughs> Hello, mate. What are you? Greek. Hold on, it's here somewhere. Don't go away. <laughs> yeah, I'll read this. Keep in touch, won't you? <laughs> so have a great rest of the evening. Thanks very much for coming tonight. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs> well, it's wonderful to be here tonight and to see so many, so many wonderful young people here tonight supporting the cause. I, I love young people. I do, I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. I think, I, yes, I do. I love them. I love young, I do. I try and stay young myself. Do you know, I even entered the Young Musician of the Year the other day. Yeah, he was furious. <laughs> no, 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 no. I uh, should say how wonderful it is to be back here at the Brixton Academy. I was here many years ago when it was just a normal theatre. I was here in a wonderful musical review entitled Gaze the Word. Oh, yeah. You know, gay used to be such a lovely word. It didn't have this other meaning. You know, one could, one could get up in the morning and say, I'm gay. You could. You could, and you could go to a gay bar and meet a gay man and bring him back home for some gay sex. And there were no homosexual connotations whatsoever. <laughs> no, but I've been, I've been, uh, I, was, I was here many years ago in Panto. I was here in Panto with Michael Elphick. He played King Rat, and every time he came on stage, the audience all went boon. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I, uh, ooh, did you find the window was open or closed? I haven't been quite so busy of late. It's not my fault. I auditioned for the lead part in Heathcliff, the musical, but I didn't get the job. The, Casting director said to me, sorry, but Heathcliff is a young, swarthy, macho stud. We, we can't just give the part to some old puff. So they, uh, <laughs> they gave it to Cliff Richard instead. <laughs> um, How dare you? How dare you laugh? You laugh. You're very unsympathetic. It, it, it struck me very badly. I took a real knock with that. It took it like a, like a lot of marvellous performers. You may forget that I'm both very extrovert but also very sensitive. I mean, for instance, Ross Abbott has a very clearly defined persona on screen, and yet off screen, I'm told, is hilarious. Very much said so. Well, they've done my show for five minutes now. Can't we get them off? Yeah, they've been so funny for too long. long. Right. That's what happens at benefits, you think? Well, hang on a minute. How long have they done? I'm sorry to have to tell you that uh, Naked Joe has pissed off home. He got tired of waiting. So, um, <clears throat> I'm in fact on stage to tell you that at this point in the show, nothing is going to happen. Nothing at all. I'm sorry. A.K. All right, something did happen. Uh, well, I will, in fact, be back for a fourth link, which I think you'll rather enjoy. So, 
Uh, but for now, you'll just have to forgive me and be assured that all, the, all these cock-ups will, of course, be cut out when this goes on the telly. Oh, uh, wow. Thank you. Eins fein für our form sec, as a German comic. I must go on. on. I'm on the, 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 uh, how you say, uh, the stage now. Thank you. Things have changed though, you know what I mean? Because my, my, my niece and nephews look at pop stars and sportsmen, you know what I mean? If I was a kid growing up nowadays, right, I would have to look at world leaders. Because my man is Mr. Nelson Mandela, right? For a lot of reasons, especially because on his 80th birthday, Nelson Mandela got married to a woman of 52. Uh -huh. I know Nelson was saying to himself, I have got some shagging to do. Because <laughs> that's incredible, Nelson could find a woman at the age of 80. I don't know, all the single men in the room make some noise. Okay, there's a few, right? All the single women make some noise. <laughs> Enough for a shag, cool. <laughs> That, they, the reason why you ask that, they reckon there are more single people out there now than ever before, right? And I reckon the reason for that is, is the stories we're told as children, right? Gives us a false image of what our future partner's gonna be like. They should ban fairy tales. Things like Cinderella, the princess of the... Sleeping Beauty is the dumbest story ever written. And if I meet the guy that wrote it, I'm gonna kick his ass. Because Sleeping Beauty tells the story of a woman who falls asleep for a hundred years, a guy walks along, sees her, kisses her, she wakes up to fall in love and get married. Uh-uh. Kiss my big brown left one. <laughs> I am not gonna kiss a woman that's been asleep for a hundred years. <laughs> Damn it, I wouldn't kiss a woman that's been asleep for 12 hours. <laughs> Cause let's face it ladies, first thing in the morning, you're not at your best. <laughs> ladies, you know after a long night's sleep, you got some dried gunk around here. There's some spit coming out here. And the breath is funky. If I was in that Sleeping Beauty story, I'd walk along and say, darling, <laughs> unless you go to the bathroom and sort yourself out, I'm gonna take out your sister, all right? <laughs> and also, I can't understand why women are waiting for their Prince Charmer to come along. Because this is a time, I believe, of female empowerment. Women are running companies, curing diseases, running countries, right? Every year on the 8th of March, we celebrate International Women's Day. You've got Bridget Jones in the bookshop and Ally McBeal on television. And by the way, if anybody knows Ally McBeal, please, somebody quick, give her some food. No, because that is one skinny woman. She's like a dipstick with lips. She is, no, look, I'm not having to go any of the slim ladies here tonight, but if you've got nipples on your back, you've got problems, okay? I don't care whether this is politically correct or not, but I like a woman with some meat on her bones, you know what I'm saying? You know, I don't know about you, but I feel like preaching now. Give me a woman with some chest, sir. Can I get an amen? Amen. All right, darling, I'm coming over. <laughs> Give me a woman with some chest, sir. Give me a woman with some belly. Give me a woman with some ass. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Too long, ladies, you're always complaining about the size of your ass. Baby, if you got a big ass, celebrate that ass. <laughs> I like that. I like to look big, you know what I'm saying? I like a woman with what I call a madumba butt. You know what I mean? That's not African. It's the sound it makes when you just, okay, I'm going too far here, right? <laughs> I do. I used to go out with a woman whose butt was so big she had to back into rooms, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I like that because look, I'm not a small guy, you know what I'm saying? I need a size of a woman because to me, sex is a contact sport, okay? I need a woman that can take a pounding, right? <laughs> somebody that's built, somebody like, like Ally McBill's flatmate, Renee, have you seen her? Woo! Or, or Zena, the warrior princess. <laughs> I'm telling you people, Zena is so fine. Every time she comes on the telly, hoop, so do I. And <laughs> little people, that's my time. God bless, have a good night. Peace. Oi, oi! How you doing, all right? Parker. Right, my name's Billy Bleach. Uh, got a little joke for you. This bloke rings up work. He says, I can't come to work today, I'm sick. And his boss goes, well, how sick are you? And he says, well, I'm in bed with my sister. <laughs> Saturday night. Right, um, I've got a few uh, tips for all the boys. 
or men in the audience on how to pull the birds. Now, I have no trouble pulling women for two reasons. One, I'm very confident, and two, I've got lovely hair. <laughs> and birds do like hair. So, choose yourself a girl. Her name's not important, because you will get to know her name later on as you get to know her, yeah? Uh, the first date is very important. I always meet my birds in a pub, because I'm in there anyway. <laughs> and that way, if I don't get on with them, I can go off and see my pals, yeah? <laughs> so, the girl arrives, let's call her Wendy. She won't be called that, but anyway. All right, Wendy, how you doing? Buy her a drink. She goes, oh, that's nice. And she sits down in a chair and relaxes. Now, don't leave her on her own for too long, because girls today have got a very short attention span, and if you leave them for too long, their mind starts to wander, all oh, acroaerobics, George Clooney, silk cut, <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> and they drift off, yeah? So, move them round the pub with you, pick them up, come on, girl, here we go. <laughs> round the pub, right? There's the snug bar over there, right? That's the pinball. There's two of my mates, that's Brian and Caligas Terry. He's a wrong one, right? <laughs> that's the jukebox, that's broke. Buy another drink if you're feeling flush. And then you say, do you want to come back to my house? Yes, she says. Don't get her a cab, she'll think you're too keen. I always take my dates home on top of the night bus. <laughs> Give them a lovely view of Bermondsey as they're going home, right? Up on top of the bus, clean down the seats, get rid of the old chip papers and all that, the old Kentucky. Now, you've got to talk to her. Could be dodgy, but if you want to bunk up, you've got to speak to her sometime. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, when I talk to girls today, I get in touch with my feminine side and uh, I use my caring voice, yeah? I'll do a bit for you now, right? Like this one. Oh! I see Stephen Hendry's one another snooker tournament. He really is a good player. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> she thinks, cut above this fella, right? <laughs> We're halfway there. Back to the flats. I'm on the 40th floor. Uh-oh, the lift broke. Don't worry, we'll walk, but keep the voice going as you go. Do you know what I mean? Then nice shoes, office, pucker, lovely, right? Into the flat. Let's check on Mum. Shh. She's asleep in front of the shopping channel. Good, I drugged her. Lovely. <laughs> now we're in the front room. Put on some music, create the right ambulance. <laughs> Frero Roche. <laughs> half one, have half one with me, no? Cream egg. All of a sudden, whack, change your pace. Do you want a bath? <laughs> More than likely, she'd be sweaty from all the stairs, yeah? Right, get in the bathroom. This is your killing ground. Four candles round the bath, light them up, do it look lovely, maybe sprinkle some rose petals on the water. If you ain't got them, I use chopped onions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, she'll love it, I tell you. Don't watch her get undressed, unless you've got a spy hole. <laughs> and then while she's bathing, just read her a little story through the keyhole while she's having a wash. I normally do a couple of chapters out of Bravo 2-0. <laughs> and if you don't get a bunk up after that, she's a lezo. <laughs> Ta-da. People at the back thinking, David Baddiel, that's fucking Rolf Harris, isn't it? <laughs> Sorry? Now, I can't fucking hear that, mate. That's just South London gibberish, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I'm a bit worried about being in South London, actually, because I have been beaten up twice in my life. Once for being Jewish, once for being a Pakistani. <laughs> happy, uh, the Happy Mondays are on later on, by the way. That's good, isn't it? Yeah, looking forward to that. Of course, uh, Sean Ryder, apparently he's clean now. Chinny record, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can say that. But when he, was, when he was taking drugs, right, Sean Ryder, apparently he used to take like 60 rocks of crack a day. 
60 rocks of crack a day. If I had 60 curly whirlies in a day, right, <laughs> I'd be fucked. <laughs> but this brings me to my subject, which I really want to talk about, which is what comic relief spend all their time trying to prevent, I want to talk about, and that is death. But I thought, if we're going to talk about death, right, it might be useful to look at the way that they treated death in another culture. And I wanted to look at the way they did it in the 16th century, right? Because things were very different then. Obviously, they had public executions. They had a, an execution called the Catherine Wheel, right? And what they used to, which is what the firework is named after. And what they used to do for the Catherine Wheel is they used to nail you to a big wooden wheel and just roll you down a hill, right? And a lot of people opted for this method of execution on the basis that if you're going to be executed, you may as well have a laugh. But I wanted to show you something, right? These are real things that were published in London every week in the 16th and 17th century, right? And these are called bills of mortality. They are lists of what people died of, right? They're like Premier League tables of death, right? And here's one. This is one from week. Look, the diseases and casualties this week. Let's have a look at this. Abortive, five. Aged, 43. Burnt in his bed by a candle at St. Giles Cripplegate. One. <laughs> so, was this like a good or a bad week for being burnt in your bed? Oh. Also, if someone comes up to you and says, hey, stay at my place tonight, it's called St. Giles Cripplegate. <laughs> Say no, all right? Look at this. Three people died because they were frightened. <laughs> Poofs. I like this one. One person died of lethargy. One person sat around so much that they died. I would have thought the person who couldn't be bothered to get out of bed when it was on fire was pretty fucking lethargic, wouldn't you? Must have been a student, mustn't it? And one person died suddenly. One died of timpani in a bizarre kettle drum incident. <laughs> and three died of Quincy, which is that American cop show. <laughs> Used to be on late night. Let's have a close look at this. 348 people died of bloody flux, scouring and flux. <laughs> they died of swearing and mumbling, those people. Ten died of cancer, and wolf <laughs> from gladiators. <laughs> 46 were killed by several accidents. <laughs> they drowned in a ditch, they fell off the belfry, they burnt in their bed, finally they fucking died. <laughs> they were medieval Frank Spencers, those people. Seven were overlaid. <laughs> That's the way I'd like to go. Um, what else have we got? 40 died of thrush and sore mouth. <laughs> a strange complication of thrush. <laughs> but the one I like most of all, on, on all these lists, right, is the one person who managed to die of piles. <laughs> How can you do that? What, a great big pile came out of his ass, covered over his head and suffocated him? <laughs> or what? I've been David Baddiel, you've been lovely. I'll see you. Good night. <laughs> I'm sorry. Are you, uh, are you open? Yes. Can I help you at all? Are you Mrs. Tubbs Tat Sillip, proprietress of this shop? Well, I know that much is true. Can I help you at all? I hope so. Tell me, have you seen this boy? Have I fuck? <laughs> this is a local shop for local people. There's nothing for you here. No need to be rude, madam, please. Martin Lee, 28 years of age, smartly dressed, 
went missing in this locality one week ago. His parents are frantic with worry. Yes. Yes, I'm sure they must be. Now, if you'll excuse me, officer, the shop is local. Is your husband on the premises? He's up the stairs, cleansing the precious things of the shop. <laughs> he can't walk, you see, and he's blind. Hello, hello, Tobs, what's going on? What's all this shouting, Will? <laughs> Have no trouble here. <laughs> Mr. Chat Syrup. Yes, yes. Well, your wife said you were up the stairs, sir. I slipped out, Tubbs, for a walk. Didn't want to disturb you. Fine evening, the town. We're very proud. He's looking for a boy. Poof, her eh? <laughs> Little bummer boy. <laughs> Come across your type before in the forces. You won't catch me with my trousers down. Mr. Tubbs, I'm here on police business, investigating the disappearance of this boy. Local boy? He's not from our town. Ah, do we know his parents? I said we'd never seen him before. Did Tubbs do right? You did it beautifully, Tubbs. There's your answer, sir. Never seen this boy before. Now, if you will excuse us, we've a shop to run. Yes, of course. Thank you for your cooperation. Keep the picture. Good morning. We didn't burn him! <laughs> I beg your pardon. You're not from around here, are you, officer? <laughs> not the uh, local Bobby we're used to. You see, Tubbs, my wife, Tubbs, and I, we know everyone around here. The people don't change. We don't like change. We don't even give change. <laughs> Strangers come to the town, to the shop, young, most of them, in gangs of one or two. <laughs> they want to browse. They want to finger the things. My precious things. They offer us money in return for goods. Well, you are a shop. Yes, a local shop. Selling local goods to local people. Decent, precious people. We don't bother the outside world. It does not bother us. And then the strangers came. Strangers leave gates open. Strangers trample crops. Strangers make the crops fail. And if the crops fail? They must not fail! If the crops fail, the town fails. If the town fails, the shop fails. And that must not happen. We are community! We are legion! We are local! <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Tatsilip, I am arresting you on suspicion of the murder of Martin Lee. You do not have to say anything, but anything you do say may be taken down and used in evidence against you. Do you have anything to say? Edward! You heard the man, Tubbs. Get undressed. <laughs> right. At last. The one you've been waiting for. Have you seen the naked girl? You've seen the two blonde girls waving? And of course, uh, you've also seen Lord Joseph Pemberton naked. Uh, what I don't think you could have been prepared for is this. And you may or may not have read recently about the court case where a woman barrister tried to claim that the black suits she wore in court were legitimate business expenses. Well, to cut a long story short, three high court judges decided they weren't. And those same three high court judges are about to run naked across the state. <laughs> Well, hung.
hung jury. Yes. Well, there we go. Uh, I haven't entirely wasted my time, nor I hope yours. Uh, thank you very much. So what's the script with all this then? Well, we're just like naked judges. Naked judges? Yeah, we just have to run across being naked. Okay, yeah, that's fine. It's kind of cool. <laughs> But I did have some genuine trouble getting here tonight, some genuine trouble getting here tonight. I, I got stopped by the police. I'm always getting stopped by the police. I think it's because I drive a carnival float with a full steel band on the back. You know. <laughs> they don't like that. No. <laughs> Reason I got it was I keep getting my bloody stereo nicked. And, uh, you know, I like a bit of music when I'm driving. <laughs> That's life, though, isn't it? It is bloody. Some say, you know, you, know, you, get, you know, you get blokes about sort of 40 or 50 and you ask about life and they go, life, eh? God, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> never seen so much. <laughs> you think, is that it? You know? No more thoughts? <laughs> oh, I'd really love all your bloody cries, man. <laughs> and he's, he's, of course, life is mad, you know. Like the other day, I went to the supermarket, bought this massive orange, got it home, turned out it was a grapefruit. <laughs> How did that happen? You know, I don't think it was. It starts for me as soon as I open my eyes in the morning. I look at the clock, I think it's quarter to six. Why am I sitting bolt upright, singing Postman Pat, Postman Pat? <laughs> and then I remember the couple who live downstairs, they've just had a little baby. He's a lovely little fella. And he lack a bit of music in the morning. And I know they've, I know they've got a baby because when I'm shouting through their letterbox, I work nights! They sort of wave him at me, you know, down the <laughs> corridor. So then I go back to bed, and then it's seven o'clock. It's about seven o'clock, time for back up, bring it in, back it up, bit more, bit more, whoa, bit more, whoa, back up, bit, whoa, bit more, whoa. Which is the lorry driver upstairs having parking nightmares. Oh. <laughs> oh. His whole career in tatters, you know, he just can't reverse that rig. So then I went down the shops, right, and all out of my list was bread and milk. Didn't mention anything about a car. But these salesmen... Oh. <laughs> They're clever, aren't they? Yeah. They use all the latest psychological trickery on you, don't they? Because I was walking past the car showroom, and they'd only gone and put a load of bunting up. You know? <laughs> I couldn't stop myself, you know? But bunting, happiness, good times. <laughs> Tripped again. I'm always getting so, you know, fooled by sales pitches and advertising. Like the other day I bought a can of special brew because I thought special meant mmm. Mmm. <laughs> yum yum, extra tasty special beer. Mmm. <laughs> I had one can of it, started threatening a whole shopping centre. <laughs> Bastard. As far as I can see, the only special thing about Special Brew is a can of it. It's never been drunk indoors. <laughs> All paid for with a five pound note. <laughs> or a pound coin, I think. <laughs> Usually there are two peas wrapped up in a hanky. You know. now, it's an amazing product. I don't think there's any product in the world that's been more clearly aimed at a particular audience. You know, they've really targeted their market, haven't they, with that product? You know? know who they want to sell it to, you know? What if the Carlsberg directors sat down one day and said, well, we're doing quite well, we're not really getting our fair share of the tramp drinks market. <laughs> Let's quadruple the strength of the beer! <laughs> Those little tigers will lap it up. Uh, morally questionable, but fun. Did you know that sharks will only attack you if you're wet? That's a fact, that is. I think. <laughs> quite reassuring in a lot of ways. Isn't it? <laughs> but uh, I, went, I went to the doctors the other day. I went to the doctors the other day because I uh, needed some material. Obviously, you know, where do you go? You know. Uh, <laughs> he's always helped me out. It's very, 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 very. And I said, look, I can't sleep. He said, I'm not surprised. It's daytime. Wait till it gets dark. <laughs> He actually wrote me out a prescription. You know, he's put your pyjamas on, mug of cocoa, close the curtains, there you go. So. <laughs> but he's a bit mental, my doctor. Like, the other day, he said, he said, what's your favourite colour? I said, blue. He said, pick a number. I said, seven. He went, B-L-U-E. 
One, two, three, four. <laughs> <laughs> you love Julie. <laughs> oh. oh, so embarrassed. Uh. <laughs> My mate Dave wasn't so lucky, you know. He chose orange and nine, had cancer. Mm. <laughs> Lenny Henry spoke to me. He knew I was roughly. Didn't know my name, first name. What the hell is happening with the... I'm sorry, I, d I didn't want to do this, but music is weird now, man. What are we going to sing in 50 years' time in the old people's home? <laughs> when they get us round the piano. We're all going to be there, come on. The woman's going to be there, come on, Mr. Bailey, you start. He's going to be there going, right here, right now, right here, right now, right now, sit down, right here, right now, get his medication, right here, right now. Old black guy with no legs sitting there going, get up, stand up, that's your chance to be a fine thing. <laughs> he starts again, back once again, Mr. Renegade Master, B-boy, damage your power to the people, back once again. Call his family, I'm pulling the plug. <laughs> I'll tell you what I know about the British summertime, we don't like it. We can't handle it. We get one week of sunshine in this country, the government on television, save water. <laughs> Do not take unnecessary baths. Only flush if you really need to. <laughs> the students everywhere are going, hooray, we've died and gone to heaven. <laughs> what do they mean there's no more water? It rains for 51 frigging weeks a year in this country. What happened to that water then? Where's that gone? Have the royal family got a giant log flume ride we don't know about? <laughs> Whoosh wee, come on darling, tit side for the camera. <laughs> Guys love the summer though, don't you guys? Yeah, yeah see, because girls dress different when the weather's hot. And guys have got to look, guys crash cars because of what girls are wearing in the summertime. Did you see, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> There's a lorry driver in front, it's all right, I saw her as well. <laughs> I've got a nun under the front wheel here. <laughs> guys have got to look, because girls, you can get away with wearing anything when the weather's hot, you can. You could leave the house wearing high heels, a leather thong, and a wonder bra. That's you dressed for work. <laughs> we can't go out dressed like that. I couldn't get to work wearing a leather thong. People have been looking at me going, Phew, that Grace Jones has let herself go, hasn't she? Stop. Don't you know I'm fucking famous or what? Booyakasha! My name is Ali G, and me is here representing the West End's massive, the Ivor Heath crew, and the Langley Posse. Are you in the house? <laughs> Langley Posse in the house. Let's take it down, let's think about the third world. The people in these countries is feeling bad because they is living in the most shitty places in the world. <laughs> but not only that, they is poor. <laughs> they is so poor, because even though they save some money on their hash because of all the homegrown, <laughs> aye, for real, for real, <laughs> they is so poor that some of them cannot even afford a pair of Air Nike Jordans, <laughs> which is strange because they make them. <laughs> Why don't they just nick them? <laughs> so what me is saying, if you remember one thing from tonight, let it be this. The third world debt. Let's keep it real. Let's keep it massive. <laughs> it now gives me great pleasure to introduce one of the biggest bands that ever came out of the third world. There is also, and I know they'll be proud that I say this, one of the biggest batty bands in the world. There is the only people here who is more mashed than me. <laughs> Apart from you there. You finished, man. Especially the skinny one who dances like he's on some dodgy crack. 
Ladies and gentlemen, go mental, go wild, big up the happy Sunday. Put a shot, big up the Brickstar Academy. Go. Bumble. Oh, yes, me and you, baby. Borrowed money from someone we never met And every day we save up the little bits that we get Just want to live a simple life to sing a simple song But there's a hole in the bucket, something's gone wrong When we started out, they told us one thing That they could help us out of all the problems we've seen Problems brought about by colonial wars And giant corporations who be open the stores We said move to the city to work in factories Where you can make the products you're selling overseas We sure you're gonna like all the guns that we send. But did we tell you about the Kajian dollar rent? Working fingers to flesh and the bone Just to try to keep up with the interest alone But still we keep paying to even up the score But every day they come back and they pile on some more Cause there's a hole in the bucket So hit me with the radio Realize There's a hole in the bucket So hit me with the radio Realize There's a hole in the bucket Realize. 
This is the money we owe you. What's this? Thank you very much. Give me some money. Oh, oh, I got it then. We don't want this. We can make it right. There's a hole in the bucket, something's gone wrong. 